Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Game Hunting. In this episode we're going to check out Kanban games in Kanban and Red Roof games in, you guessed it, Red Roof. I was told these shops are linked and you can inquire about stock from either location in either location, which is pretty cool. We're starting out in Kanban games and the front of the shop is geared towards modern games because I imagine that's what most people come in to check out but I came in here for some games from older systems and what drew my eye initially was this display of Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color and Game Boy games. There were a lot of great games here, you can see Castlevania and some Donkey Kong games here. I already have that Castlevania game but there were certainly some great games that drew my eye here and look Looking back in retrospect, I always see games that I wish I had picked up at the time. Next to that display there is a selection of PlayStation 4 games, Nintendo Switch games and at the bottom of that there are some Nintendo 3DS games as well. Next to those games there is another display at the top of which there are some boxed Nintendo games. For the Nintendo 64 there is GoldenEye and Doom 64. Below that we have a selection of memory cards and remotes and things like that. And then below that there are some controllers for various different systems. On the other side of this display there's some loose Nintendo 64 cartridges, some Dreamcast games, some handheld consoles, and then there are various figures below that and at the bottom there are some consoles on display as well. To the right of this cabinet there are some secret unlockable extra Game Boy Advance and Game Boy games tucked away and as we move into the back there are some loose PlayStation Portable UMDs where if you want to get the game without the case for a little bit cheaper you can certainly do that. Looking around the back here we have some Xbox 360, there are some PSP and Vita games there, there are some Guitar Hero controllers there, a lot of PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 there and some Blu-rays and on the right hand side there is some Wii and PlayStation 3 and things like that. Taking a closer look to the left hand side there was the Xbox 360 and there's the PlayStation Portable and the Vita and here I take a closer look at Impossible Mission which is a remake of the Commodore 64 game. This was really cool and I believe this game is also on the PS2 which would be my preferred way to grab it. There are some Guitar Hero controllers here and underneath that there is a ton of PlayStation 2. I'm always on the lookout for PlayStation games I don't already have, so I was very keen to dive into the great selection of PlayStation games that they had here. And as well as PS2, they of course had PlayStation 1, and I took a eagle-eyed view of these as well. One great game here is Jay Cocoon. I already have this game, but it is really a hidden gem, and I can't recommend it enough. I would say it's a lot like playing a Pokemon game that has a more Final Fantasy feel to it. And they did have some great PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 games here. I took a look at this game here, which was The Unholy War, which also included a demo of Soul Reaver. Now I don't recall if that demo was still present, however if it was complete perhaps I should have picked that up. On the other side we have Nintendo DS, GameCube and original Xbox games as well as some PC games and a bunch of accessories there as well. There's also a selection of Wii games and under that is a PlayStation Move sharpshooter accessory which I actually have and there's a Wii Fit in the box. From the Xbox games I picked out Knight of the Empire which looked really cool but I didn't pick this game up because I didn't know much about it. However a game I do know quite a lot about is Planescape Torment which is a game I already have so I didn't pick up this double pack. I came to the conclusion that if I wanted to grab the other game from this pack Soulbringer that I would go after a regular DVD style case for that rather than the gimmick packaging as it would be a fraction of the price, which is often the case when you look at packaging like big box PC games. It's a lot cheaper if you go for a single jewel case or a DVD style case from a later release. As you can see on this side they have some more Wii and a good selection of PlayStation 3 games. PS3 games are really good to go after at this time because they're really cheap and I think that PS4 games will go that way as well with the PS5 out. They had some Wii U games there as well. I ended up picking up 
Hugo Frogfighter on the PlayStation 1. This game looked wild, and I got Bubble Bubble Old and New, and I also got Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, and I also picked up Midway's Greatest Arcade Hits, as well as Shining Soul 2 on the Game Boy Advance. Our next destination is Red Roof Games in Red Roof. I was instantly greeted by 3DS and DS games and one game in particular really drew my eye and it was Solar Turobo Red Hunter, a game where you play as a dog boy and it's an RPG with mechs, I have no idea why I didn't pick this up, that's a really good price on this game, I just caught myself slipping, but oh well. We also take a look at some Xbox 360 games and PS3 games as well. They had a lot of modern games here and as I mentioned before I think a lot of people are looking for these games but in particular myself I was looking for games for more of the older systems so I did pass by some of these systems like the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 and I do think these games will get a lot cheaper as time moves on. You can see I'm going to take a look at the Wii U here and PlayStation 1 games here which was really cool. They had some PSP games here as well down the bottom and this is what really took my interest. The PlayStation 1 game selection here was really good. There were a lot of great games to take a look at here and certainly I did grab a couple of games from the PS1 selection that I will show you at my pickups at the end of the video. So from these PlayStation games, some of these games really stood out to me. This game here is Crossfire which is a real time strategy game and looked really interesting. Many of these PS1 games piqued my interest including Judge Dredd which is an on rail zapper game and I will grab anything that I can use a light gun peripheral with. Here's The Lost World, Jurassic Park. Now I pick out a bunch of PS1 games here, some of which I did get, some of which I didn't. You can see at the end with my pickups. Here's Landmaker which is a puzzle game and I love puzzle games so spoiler I did end up picking that up. This next game is a Warhammer Fantasy Battles game and that is Warhammer Shadow of the Horned Rat and this is a real-time tactics game that was really cool and this game here is Warzone 2100 which looks explosive to say the least. I love that packaging on that game as well. In this cabinet we have a bunch of consoles and at the bottom there is a crystal original Xbox which was awesome and then we have a lot of Xbox One and PlayStation 4 games here. Now as I alluded to I think these systems games will get a lot cheaper as people get the Xbox series consoles and the PlayStation 5. I like to keep all of my games, I like to collect, but a lot of people like to trade in their old games when new systems come out and that's when these games will get a lot cheaper and it's going to be a good time to collect them as it is with the Xbox 360 when the Xbox One came out and the PlayStation 3 of course when the PlayStation 4 came out. Having said that, a lot of PlayStation 4 games and Xbox One games are really cheap right now as well so it's a good time to collect it as it is right now for the Xbox 360 as you saw some Xbox 360 games there and here we have some PlayStation 2 games there's a good amount of PS2 games here and I'm always looking out for uncommon PS2 games that I don't yet have my hands on for my collection and here we have some Wii games some DS games above those and there is a little bit of GameCube there and at the bottom we have some original Xbox as well Similar deal with these systems, there's a bunch of games that I am looking for. I've got a lot of common games already for these systems, but there's some great games here. As you can see, here is The Bar's Tale for the original Xbox at a fantastic price, and if I didn't already have that, I would have picked that up. So what I did grab from this location was Landmaker and Judge Dredd on the PlayStation 1 and two Amiibos, Princess Zelda and Link. But what else did I get? Well it's time to see what I picked up. So what did I pick up? Well first of all from Camborn Games I picked up Bubble Bubble Old and New. This is a version of Bubble Bubble on the Game Boy Advance which includes the original game and one with remade visuals which is very cool. A little bit of a taste of the old and some of the new as well. Classic puzzle game, really enjoyable and a great game to have on the Game Boy Advance. This is certainly one of those games that you can pick up and play when you're out and about and it's an awesome game to have on your handheld. So I'm very happy to have that. Any version of this game, like a game like Tetris, I'll just pick up any version because it's a classic puzzle game and I enjoy playing it. 
Next up, I picked up Final Fantasy Tactics on the Game Boy Advance. Love the Final Fantasy games. This is a tactical version, which is awesome. The gameplay is a little different. This was a classic game, also released on the PlayStation 1. I would love to get that copy. Like many cartridge games, I would love to have this in the box, but when you go for a loose copy, you're paying half the price and it takes up a fraction of the storage space as well, so very handy at that. I would love to have this game in the box, maybe I'll update, I'll upgrade later down the line, but for now I'm just happy to have it and at a good price as well. You certainly pay a lot less when you go for a loose cartridge, so very cool to have this and to have that in my collection. Next up, I picked up Midway's Greatest Arcade Hits. Now this was a very cheap cartridge, I picked this up for only a couple of pounds and I love these Midway arcade games and they're very fun and just to have the portability to have that on the Game Boy Advance is pretty handy and I only paid a couple of pounds for this as well. There's a little damage on this cartridge from the pricing label and taking that off. Uh, that's unfortunate but I only paid a couple of pounds for this so I certainly can't complain about the price that I paid and I'm just happy to have it. They're great games and it's good to have them in the collection by any means and on any system. So here on the Game Boy Advance, the Midway Greatest Arcade Hits is certainly a great addition as it is. Now a cartridge I only paid £1 for here is Pitfall, the Mayan Adventure on the Game Boy Advance. This was only £1, I believe they had another copy of this in slightly better condition for 2 or £3, a little bit more. But I only paid £1 for this, it was a little beat up but it looks fine to me, certainly in better condition than my Midway cartridge after I took the pricing label off. But this is a really cool a platformer game. It's a little different from the console ports of this uh, series at the time. And it's a far departure, of course, from the original game on the Atari. But it's still cool to have this on the Game Boy Advance. And I only played a pound for it. And I really, really can't complain at that price. So it's certainly cool to have this on the Game Boy Advance and to have that in the collection. Next up, I picked up one that I was... Uh, very happy to find and that was Shining Soul 2 on the Game Boy Advance. Now I have other games in this series on the Game Boy Advance complete in the box that being uh, the Legacy of the Dark Dragon and the uh, Shining Soul the first game. Now it would be cool to get this in the box of course but getting a loose cartridge was a lot cheaper and I certainly wanted to have this game in my collection as well. These are the reimagined tales of Shining Force and uh, the story of these games is really awesome and these are just great tactical RPGs or RPGs in general and a fantastic game to have on your Game Boy Advance. I definitely recommend if you're a fan of RPGs to check out Shining Force, go back to the original on the Mega Drive, that is a fantastic game and check it out because it is a fantastic game and you will not be disappointed. Now I picked up a little bit of an oddity here and this is Hugo Frog Fighter on the PlayStation 1 and I originally picked this game up because I thought it was a like a ripoff or I should say a clone of Frogger but as it turns out this game series has been going quite a while um, and I hadn't heard about it. I believe this is Frogger 5 although I could be wrong. Frogger 5 sorry I'm already confused about it you can see how little I know about this. I believe this is Hugo 5 but I could be wrong there. As, of, as evident by the fact that I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but I believe this is the fifth game in the series. And it is a series that has spanned many games on different systems. So it's pretty cool to grab this. It To me it looks like some kind of um, Frogger style game. And it was very cheap. That's why I grabbed it. But regardless I'm happy to grab a copy of this. And it'll be interesting to see what this one looks like. And that's Hugo Frog Fighter on the PlayStation 1. So from Red Roof Games next, I picked up some really cool stuff. First of all, I picked up a Link Amiibo. Very happy about this. Link is one of my favourite characters in all of gaming. And this is the Ocarina of Time Amiibo. You can tell that from the cool base that this model has. And it's all about the base. But I digress. This is an awesome model in and of itself. And as an Amiibo, it has other functionalities with different games as well. Certainly this is a character that is very dear to my heart and I'm very happy to have this and I found it at an absolutely great price as well. That's the Ocarina of Time Link Amiibo. 
I picked up another amiibo that went along with that, and very appropriately, it is Zelda amiibo. That's right, we have Princess Zelda here in amiibo form. This is from the Smash Bros collection. Again, you can tell that by the symbol on the base. And this is very cool to have. Another one of my favorite Nintendo characters and video game characters all around. Cool that this character is in Smash Bros and it's cool that it made it to amiibo form. These amiibos are fantastic just for display to liven up the shelves, but also that they have that extra functionality in the games themselves is very cool as well. So Smash Bros, Zelda, Amiibo there, very cool to grab that. Got a PlayStation 1 game here and that is Judge Dredd. Now this game does not work on PlayStation 2. It uses a video mode that the PlayStation 2 does not do so it will only play on a PlayStation 1. This is a light gun game and it's pretty fun at that. My favorite thing about this game is that it has some really cheesy live action video sequences. It reminds me of the straight to video Robocop movies that came out that a lot of people don't even know about but there were extra Robocop movies that came out straight to video and uh, this reminds me a lot of that and I feel like it's a shame we didn't get more live action Judge Dredd stuff. We only got uh, the Sylvester Stallone movie and then after that we got a uh, remake of sorts as well, a modern film, but I wish we had got like a cheesy like version of Judge Dredd like you see in the footage of this game, that would have been really awesome. But this game is pretty cool, I really love light gun games in of themselves, I wish this was playable on the PlayStation 2 then it would be a little more convenient, but as it stands I'm still very happy to have this and I certainly grabbed this as soon as I saw it because a light gun game in of itself, a zapper game I will grab. A Judge Dredd Zapper game? Yeah, that's going in my collection. And then lastly, we have a puzzle game here. This is Landmaker on the PlayStation 1. This is a very cool puzzle game. Essentially, like many puzzle games, you're matching up items on a grid to clear it. If it becomes overwhelmed, you lose the game. Very much in the style of many puzzle games, but this game has a very unique take to it as well. And I think I really like the visuals of this game, and I like how the game plays out. And it's very addictive in the sense that many puzzle games, you just want to put that time into it, even though they're quick fixes, if you will, um, you can certainly spend hours playing a puzzle game just because of the simple yet pleasing nature of the gameplay certainly drags you in. And that's why I like these puzzle games. I certainly like them on handhelds and I like them on my home consoles as well because you don't necessarily have to commit a lot of time to them to get a lot of enjoyment out of them as well. I feel the same way about shoot 'em up games as well, which is why I lean towards puzzle games and shoot 'em up games. But I also do like my RPGs as you've seen as well, although they require a little more time. But anyway... Our time is up for these pickups at the end of this video game hunting video. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, be sure to leave a like or a comment. Let me know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for more awesome content. And if you'd like to, you can also support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership. But lastly, thank you for watching. I have been MVL and I will catch you next time. <laughs>